Welcome back to Midwest Magnum. I'm Daryl. Today will be our first range outing with the new Ruger PC9 9mm carbine. We're going to be doing some reliability work and we're going to be doing some accuracy testing with it. One, two, three, four, five. That's pretty close. It's pretty close. I could come down perhaps another click. Great day today, 133 rounds through it. We did have a couple of uh, failures to feed. I attribute that to it's brand new, and I do have an extra heavy uh, recoil spring in here as well. But tomorrow, we're going to be heading out to our range, and we're going to be hitting steel at distance with this little guy. We're back out at the private range. We're going to do some more testing. One thing I did today, I loaded six Glock Happy Sticks. I used four different types of ammunition. I used Blazer Brass 115, Winchester White Box 115. I used PMC 124 and a big handful of ZQI 115. Mixed it all together, loaded these six mags. We're going to test some reliability today. zero failures. This thing does not seem to care what ammo we're feeding it now. Today's review is brought to you by Central Arms. Central Arms offers retail gun sales focusing on special orders for hard to find firearms, ammunition, and accessories. We get a lot of our inventory from Central Arms and they are awesome. Visit their website at centralarmsmp.com. The Ruger PC9 carbine features an integrated Picatinny style rail and features a threaded barrel with included thread protector that allows for use of standard muzzle accessories. It has interchangeable magazine wells for use of common Ruger and Glock magazines. It comes with an accurate sighting system with adjustable ghost ring rear aperture sight and non-glare protected blade front sight. The PC9 has a light, crisp trigger pull with minimal over-travel and positive reset utilizing proven 1022 trigger components. It is a very accurate gun for a 9mm. The Ruger PC9 carbine comes in a 9mm caliber. The overall capacity is standard in 17 round magazines, but can use Glock mags including the 30 plus round Happy Sticks. The barrel length is 16.12 inches with an overall length of 35 inches. It has a 1 to 10 barrel twist and the Magpul PC backpacker we reviewed only weighs 6.2 pounds. Our scoring system consists of three components, construct, performance, and maintenance, each having three additional subcomponents with each of these subcomponents evaluated at 33.3%. The scores are then tallied up and divided by three for an overall rating. Midwest Magnum considers any score above 85% to be a quality firearm. The big hit for the Ruger PC9 was in the construction section, where we deducted for the cheap factory components we had to upgrade. As you can see, the Ruger PC9 scored a 91% with an overall a minus rating. Today we're going to be looking at the uh, Ruger PC9 uh, carbine. I kind of picked this thing up uh, sort of on a whim. I was looking for another uh, 9 millimeter carbine that would accept block happy sticks. And I was trying to avoid anything, you know, I've got plenty of uh, P uh, AR9s and I thought my only other 9 millimeter I've got that'll accept Glock mags is my uh, Chris Vector. I wanted something I could take down kind of settled on this one. And when I went to look at those uh, rifles, they actually had everything there. And my first thought was, these are nose heavy pigs. I don't want one of these. Until I got to the Magpul uh, backpacker stock, the gun balanced really nice. I really liked it. 
So it came home with me. I've left it set for a while since we've had so many other projects to work on, but I finally broke this thing out, did a bunch of different upgrades to it, which will go into why I did what I did. But I'll say off the cuff, I'm really pleased with the purchase. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice gun. It's a real nice gun. I was, I was really pleased with it. I just, there were several things that in looking it over, it's, it's typical Ruger. You're going to change a few parts. It's just the nature of the Ruger beast. What are some of the upgrades that you oh. did? One of the, the upgrades I did was, I mean, I wanted, you know, basically, this is basically a premise off of the Ruger 10, uh, 1022. This bolt assembly is just going to bang into the rear of the receiver. Ruger just uses a, a hard piece of plastic back there. I definitely went to the, you know, tandem cross. They've got a shock buff, which is made out of aluminum, this nice material that will really cushion the impact, that blow, because that's just a that's just a dead blow back there. Yeah. I definitely upgraded to the, uh, the it's a t plus 20% recoil spring because it makes sense. This, oh, is a, this is a blowback operation, so I definitely wanted to slow that operation. You could feel it too. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it, 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 does, it, nice is, it does shoot much better. One of the things I looked at when I first dis disassembled it, when I first bought it was, why did you use plastic to hold on to the recoil spring? It's a little, it's a little plastic clip. It's like, oh, that really looks durable. It's now a stainless steel billet, little piece of, well, not billet, it's a machine stainless steel. And that one, that, it's, it's a little bit larger, works a lot better. Well, the part of the assembly instructions were, you know, you, you're going to flip it upside, the receiver upside down to put your bolt assembly back in. Well, the two uh, pins that hold in your bolt just fall out. So I went to the Mcarbo website and I got their tool steel bolt pins and extractor pin. Those pins, when you put those in, they actually fit properly. When you see the actual wear in that area, you realize you would want tool steel right yeah. there. And of course, I replaced the extractor with a proper hardened tool steel. I did a lot of research before I actually bought it. And um, people were saying, yeah, it ran great for about a thousand rounds. I'm having some issues with extraction. Well, the extractor is starting to wear out. It's just, it's not, it's just a softer steel. So going to a hardened uh, tool steel extractor made perfect sense. Comes with a nice trigger too. Yeah, uh, surprisingly, yeah, I didn't that, do that anything with the me. trigger. I mean, I thought about, well, maybe some different trigger springs and whatnot. And it was like, yeah, trigger's great. I, I got no problem. Yeah, I don't think I touched that. No, I, did, I never did. I didn't it touch it. real thing. nice. It worked out real nicely. Without those upgrades, totally different gun, right? <laughs> Well, I think if you didn't shoot it a lot, it probably would be fine. It's you, just, you, but if you shot it a lot, like if you didn't, I, you wouldn't notice. I think it, the, fir the first thing you'd notice is mm -hmm. uh, that extractor. It's, it's, you can the quality difference between what was there and what M Carbo sent me is like no, no question, no question difference. But it was just a few little upgrades. I didn't spend that much money. And yeah. That's kind of, and I added the larger charging handle because of the way this is laid out. I'm going to leave, you know, on the, on the left side. I'm going to keep my. Uh, magazine release. So in case I'll just hit it with my thumb, drag the magazine out, insert the new mag. It's probably quicker since my hand's already out of position anyways, to just reach under it like a dirty AK owner and just hit her that way. The one thing that annoys me, and it's like Ruger could have thought this through better. You have to have tools to take this down. There's no other way to take this gun apart. I mean, obviously you're going to have to remove it from stock, but the charging handle has to be removed before you can begin the, your disassembly. Ruger decided they were gonna just make this a threaded on, deal on each end. And then they specify 65 inch pounds to keep it there. Well, <laughs> yeah, Six, you know, basically if you don't tighten this enough, you're gonna lose that charging handle. And, and when you have to understand is there is no bolt release in this gun. The charging handle is your bolt release. So you do need that bolt handle there. So there's no other way to do that. So what you've got is either A, you're going to, you know, kind of use blue Loctite all the time on this thing, or you're going to get an inch pounds torque wrench and torque it right. But if you try to just say, oh, well, that's tight enough, she, she might come loose, or you might think, you know, well, it came loose, and you start mashing those threads, and now you've wrecked your threads, and now you've got another real problem on your hands. Yeah. Ruger could have thought that one through better. An inch pound torque wrench isn't that expensive. You should have one. The Magpul uh, stock is set up to accept QD mounts. So I use the Magpul Type 1 so I can use a T-Rex sling, which I put on everything is T-Rex slings. And it turned out really, I'm pleased. I mean, we had on that initial range outing in that very first magazine, we had the two failures, yep. which w the one was, we were still in single digits when that first failure. Oh yeah, we had, I don't think we even took 10 shots. You just got jammed.
No, we, it was, we were still in the single digits on that first uh, failure to feed. Yeah. And the second one was just a few later. So we were just like 12 or 14. Both of and them it happened, happened within yeah. the first mag. Right. And so. then it just smoothed right up and started running really well. Yeah. So it ran really, really nicely. And it's really surprisingly accurate. I was I was really pleased with the actually considering this, you know, the, I'm using an Aimpoint Pro, which the, the dot, even when you're trying to keep it as, as you know, the, the illumination as low as you can to get a more precise aiming point is still covering the target. Dot is as big as the target. <laughs> That's going to be fun. It's got the target covered, and it's I, more of a, I'm this target, isn't yeah. a precision no, rifle, no, so I, you're thinking, well, that center mass, that'll work. That'll work. The Magpul stock makes it super light. I think I the Magpul can't. stock makes such a difference in no. this gun. I don't think I would have bought it if it hadn't been for the Magpul stock on it. But when you actually handle it, you realize that's the way to fly with this setup because the balance is much, much, much improved. And to help improve the balance, the stock will open <clears throat> very simply. And inside, I've got a fully loaded uh, 19X magazine. It gives me a perfect balance to the gun now. That's just one of those cool little features. Yeah. I like how it breaks down. What I discovered the easiest way to make and you know, ensure you've got a good lockup on this is I took, I just had it separated. I backed off the nut right here, completely loosened it up, locked it back onto the gun. It's very simple to do. It just, boom, just locks right on. And then I tightened the nut as much as I could with my fingers, took, took the, uh, separated them again, added three clicks, and then tried to put it back on again. Now it was just a little too tight, backed off one more, backed off one click. Perfect. Locked right in. Not too much tension, but it's tight. Yeah. And the other, the other thing I did notice, because I did test it, was when you do put your barrel back on, you cycle the action several times, let the bolt go home a couple of times. I tried it both ways. What I did is I just simply put the barrel on and fired a shot, and it was definitely not hitting to point of aim for that first shot. It settled back in again, I guess is the only way to say it. Nope. Which that's one of those little idiosyncrasies of this setup. So cycle your action a little bit, let the bolt go home a few times, and that takes care of that problem. You simply push up like this, and then you turn it like that. And that's all there is to it. Nothing more to it, it than that. Right, there. and it puts right in there, and it locks yep. right into there place. It, and then the the barrel goes. Mm -hmm. right in here and it just becomes one right. piece and it, and it locks right in here and th you've got these if you notice these squeeze to unlock it yep so it locks in place which is pretty cool yeah but when you go to put it back together it's just simply a case of four o'clock and that's all there is to it like i said let the action go home a couple of times to reset it make sure your accuracy is on but that's it you can get that in the backpack and get that sure. out of the backpack within seconds. Yep. The gun itself is really well thought out. It's just it's the little details Ruger just neglects. And that, but you know that from all the Rugers you've owned, all, I immediately start changing out parts. And it, you know what they are. The frustrating thing to me is that they're all hidden parts. So if you don't know what you're doing, most of them are. Right. If you don't know what you're doing, you don't realize you've got plastic in there or you've got something that's not a perfect fit. Oh. And that over time will lead to a breakdown. It, it can, it, yeah. especially if you're, you're somebody like us who we're going to go out and we're going to shoot, shoot, shoot. Yeah. And we will, we'll, if something's going to break like that, we'll find it. Oh, yeah. That's why I just try to just look at stuff right away from the beginning. Say, nope. That's going to break. Get rid of that. Yeah, but the first thing I noticed when I picked this gun up is I'm like, holy cow, it's like holding a 22. Yeah, it's, it's so light. It's it's really well thought out. I, I like That's why I think this stock is really the way to fly. Yeah. Or actually the original stock that they put on them. The reliability was amazing. As Daryl said, with regards to changing all those different bullets and you know the different um, grains, it it cycled yeah. through, yeah, what, it, what do we have, six happy mags just oh in yeah. that Yeah, that I, had the six, I had my six happy mags, and it didn't notice that all that ammo was basically mixed and matched and yeah. different weights and different manufacturers. You could hear it. You, the, the, could, you could hear the ZQ. Hear it. I knew when I would hit a ZQI round because it would pew. Yeah. You know your gun's going to be very dirty because this thing does get dirty. This That's the thing I've noticed already is being a true blowback operation, she gets crusty. So take it apart once in a while, wipe it down. Because yeah. it definitely, you know, right down into the magwell area, tops of the mags, and you know, way down into here, she was just all chalked up. Which yeah. that's, that's the nature of the beast. But 
when Ruger ships this, they ship it with two different uh, magazine inserts, one for the proprietary Ruger magazines for the SR9 and for Glock magazines, 9mm. And the changing those out, it couldn't be any simpler. You simply, once you've got the, the action out of the receiver, you simply center the magazine release and just lift it right out. That's all there is to it. Drop the new one in, just let go of the magazine release, and it locks right back in place. One recommendation I'd make is I've already seen pictures of people having bent the ejectors on these inserts and it's caused by them just getting just ham-fisted happy slamming those magazines in place. You don't need to do that. And it everything about the gun is nice. I mean, yeah. obviously the recoil is a lot different after you put in that the new yeah, spring. It, it seems it's just really subtle. It's it just, is. It's it's almost subtle. it feels like you're shooting the 22 yeah. after you put in that spring. Mm -hmm. Like you're shooting a 22, yet it sounds like a nine. Yeah, I definitely, if you do no other upgrades, definitely consider the uh, the little buffer. So you're just preventing that receiver battering, which you are going to get. And consider the uh, the, the upgrade. It's a 20% spring. You can get it both of those at a tandem cross. They're inexpensive. I think the spring was 10 bucks, and I think the 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 plate little shock buff is like 20 bucks. It's like money well spent. This is a great gun. I love it. And I was really pleased. I mean, my biggest thing is it's reliable. Trigger is actually surprisingly decent. Yeah, that, I that got really complaints. caught me off guard. You know how snobby I am about triggers. That caught me off guard on how nice yeah. the trigger was. So. It, it balances nice, especially with that loaded mag in the rear. Yeah. It's got a great balance. It's a lot of fun to shoot. This gun, I'm really pleased. I'm glad I bought it. I'm glad they had it in this version because had they not, I never would have bought it. This stock makes the difference with this gun. Yeah, definitely. I recommend this one. And if you find it in that Magpul stock, buy it. You'll like this. So if you haven't already, please subscribe, hit the like button, hit the alert button, and come back next week for Midwest Magnum. Thanks for watching our video. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the alerts so that you don't miss any of our future videos. And by the way, that logo right there, you can click that to subscribe. So show us how good your aim is. That logo right there, that one. Go ahead, click it.